Thanks for the chair event dealing with Smarter Commerce. Uh, we'll give everybody one or two minutes here to join the session, but uh, looking forward to having everyone join us uh, for the next few minutes here on today's webinar. All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me just start by saying a big thank you to all of today's attendees for participating in our webinar here. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, what a JD Edwards firm approach to credit card payments, invoice payments, reconciliation, and PCI security really looks like. Let me just spend a minute introducing our attendees, and then we'll jump into what our agenda is going to look like. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, speaking as Jerry Van Dow, I'm an account executive, uh, part of the sales team uh, here at Smarter Commerce. We're also joined by Diego Fernandez, who is our director of product, uh, as well as uh, joined by Alex Rodriguez, who is our director of technical services. So glad to have you guys with us. Let me just flash a quick agenda slide for what our time together is going to look like. Um, we're going to be spending a few minutes talking about uh, uh, who we are as a company, who, who exactly is Smarter Commerce, what is Smarter Commerce, and then dive into uh, an overview from a payment standpoint of what a JD AdWords first solution uh, really looks like. Uh, from there, we will transition over to a demonstration, uh, the demonstration portion of our agenda. And hopefully we'll have a few minutes uh, of Q&A towards the end of today's session. That being said, uh, all of you should have access to the question and answer a panel on Zoom. Uh, and so if you do have any questions throughout the session, feel free to insert it uh, on that uh, window and through the Zoom uh, solution, and we should be able to address some of your questions uh, real time throughout the webinar. Um, so with that said, final note is that today's webinar is being recorded, so you should be receiving the recording of this uh, over the next couple of days. Here, let's uh, provide some overview information of who is Smarter Commerce uh, from an organizational standpoint. Uh, perhaps we've got some customers in the audience. You guys are familiar with who you are, but if you're not, if you're new to Smarter Commerce, uh, here are just some some general points. As an organization, we've been around for over 30 years. All 30 of those years, we've been working in the JD Edwards space. Uh, everything from implementing JD Edwards, uh, doing large consulting and development projects for JD Edwards, uh, as well as our Smarter Commerce. Um, uh, uh, product uh, family, and through both of those sides of our business, uh, we've completed well over 500 projects uh, over our 30-year history. As an organization, we're based in South Florida. We have a network of professionals working remotely all across the U.S., as well as an office of developers in San Jose, Costa Rica. And in the consulting space, really for the last 20 years, we've been developing a family of products that we brand as Smart Commerce. Uh, more on that in just a minute. Um, mostly because a lot of JD Edwards companies looking into the marketplace were trying to find vendors um, that provided uh, you know, payment solutions, retail solutions, commerce solutions, and we're just not finding solutions that really uh, connected with JD Edwards, integrated with JD Edwards on a real-time basis. And so that's what we've really been focusing on as an organization for the past 20 years. Here's a quick snapshot of some of our customers. Perhaps we've got some customers in the audience. A uh, special welcome to you guys. A couple of things to note here. All of these organizations are JD Edwards customers. Uh, or rather, all of our customers are also JD Edwards customers. We've got close to 150 JD Edwards customers right now in the customer family. Uh, perhaps some of the logos on the screen are familiar to you. We've got a broad mix of B2B and B2C uh, organizations in our portfolio, as well as a different, different, uh, varied set of uh, industries and different sized organizations. The other thing that all these organizations have in common is that at some point they all were overwhelmed by a new project. Uh, maybe they had something uh, going on in the commerce, retail, payment space that they just didn't know who to partner with. 
after partnering with Smart Commerce, they, they were able to launch a successful e-commerce initiative and position themselves to be an industry leader. So we're thinking, asking a broad question, hey, what is Smart Commerce? Uh, you know, to put it plainly, it's really a family of solutions that help companies, particularly companies that are running JD Edwards, unite their commerce, payments, and retail systems uh, into one and simple automated uh, solution that connects with JD Edwards. And so here you kind of have a snapshot of our solution family. Uh, today, obviously, we'll be focusing our discussion exclusively on our payment processing solution, which is a native JD Edwards application that allows customer service reps or internal JD Edwards users to accept credit card information over the phone uh, and through different channels in a PCI compliant fashion. We also have a retail point of sale solution, again, integrated real time with JD Edwards, a digital commerce for both B2B and B2C uh, requirements, and a call center management solution and an ad attacks connector. Uh, as a connector to the Avalara Avitax sales as compliance platform to JD Edwards. The key here is that all of these solutions talk to and connect to JD Edwards on a real time basis. Subject of our conversation today is, hey, what does it look like to take a JD Edwards uh, first approach to payment processing, to credit card payments, to invoice payments, and so on? And that's exactly what Smarter Commerce does. We keep JD Edwards at the center because JD Edwards is the single source of truth for all of the information that relates to uh, customer master information, bill to, ship to, uh, sales order information, so on and so forth. For the single order payments, uh, you know, with a JD Edwards first solution, you're, it means that your team, uh, your customer service reps, or uh, your JD Edwards users are able to work in a native JD Edwards environment, which is a solution that they're already very accustomed to utilizing. And so by implementing a solution that leverages that JD Edwards native user experience, they're able to pick up on the solution quickly and they don't have to be bouncing between multiple screens uh, to complete a sales order for a customer. Uh, so under this approach, a customer would be able to call in, customer service rep picks up the phone, uh, and, and then they can walk through an entire sales order process uh, all within JD Edwards and complete that credit card authorization all within JD Edwards. Additionally, uh, a capability that is offered is what we call authorized by email or text. We also call it authorized by message. Uh, and this capability allows a customer service rep if they feel uncomfortable receiving credit card information over the phone directly from within JD Edwards, they can trigger a secure uh, email or text to the customer where the customer clicks on that encrypted link and then inputs their own credit card information and uh, releases the order off of hold within JD Edwards. The advantage to this is that your customer service rep can stay within JD Edwards, uh, not even be exposed to any of the credit card data, uh, but still leverage that native JD Edwards uh, reconciliation process uh, on the back end. Once that authorization has been obtained, uh, a JD Edwards centric solution such as Smart Commerce would then come back if, a few business days later when that product is actually shipped and then would charge the card at that moment in time. Um, additionally, a, a good solution will give your team flexibility to select whatever leading credit card processor uh, your team chooses to partner with. Um, additionally, from a smarter commerce standpoint, we also uh, allow for uh, payment terminal support. If you have card present requirements, you can integrate that directly into the GD Edwards sales order process. Uh, and you can also extend this application to other third-party e-commerce platforms uh, in case you want to leverage some of the JD, JD Edwards first capabilities out to third-party applications, it can certainly be done. Additionally, uh, not only should your team be looking at a JD Edwards first solution on the sales order side, but there's also many advantages to taking a JD Edwards first approach towards invoice payments. And again, we're talking about an accounts receivable, uh, uh, collections personnel on the phone with a customer who's looking to pay an invoice. They can do that through an ACH transaction, through a credit card payment. Uh, and ultimately, the goal here is to keep that account receivable personnel natively within JD Edwards and process the entire invoice within JD Edwards. A lot of solutions in the marketplace, maybe like uh, a, a virtual terminal for credit card, for example, uh, or even on the ACH side, will require to will require the personnel to leave JD Edwards, go to a separate platform, 
uh, complete the transaction on that platform and then come back to JD Edwards and indicate that the platform uh, that, tr that the transaction was completed within JD Edwards and then close out the receivable. Uh, when in reality, you still have an entirely additional step of reconciling both of those payments on the back end, maybe once a month or something like that. And this reconciliation process creates a lot of non value added work uh, for your team. Uh, with a JD Edwards centric solution, that reconciliation process happens instantaneously and doesn't have to be uh, delegated until uh, for the end of the month. Um, and so, I, you know, more capabilities, you know, I've talked a little bit about credit card, ACH, which is a bank to bank transaction, uh, EFT in Canada. Um, there's also the possibility of extending some of these capabilities out to what's called an e payments portal or an electronic invoice presentment and payment platform. Uh, it's basically e-payments. I think most of us are kind of familiar with what that is, right? It's a website where the customer, uh, your customer in this case, would input their credentials and they log in. And if you're using a JD Edwards-centric solution, uh, immediately they can start reviewing open invoices uh, that are indicated as open within JD Edwards. Uh, it's not a batch file that gets updated every night, you know, potentially opening up the possibility for a double payment or uh, latent information. A JD Edwards centric solution uh, keeps those two tied together uh, as a real time uh, through a real time integration, uh, which allows your customers to pay open invoices using a credit card ACH. They can set up auto pay capabilities, and it, as soon as that invoice is paid, it automatically gets recorded in JD Edwards, and the receivable is closed out. Additionally, because you're making a lot of JD Edwards information available to the customer online, they can download their uh, uh, phys you know, a physical copy of their invoices as a PDF. They can view their order history, order status, and as well as view account summary information. Again, given a JD Edwards first solution, JD Edwards centric solution, all of this information being uh, real time connected from JD Edwards can be reported to your customer and they can have absolute trust that they're interacting uh, with real time information, not something that is uh, 24 hours uh, delayed. Um, so uh, with that said, I'm going to have Alex kind of step in. Uh, again, Alex is our technical services, our director of technical services. And uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit about the importance of prioritizing payment security when you're evaluating a, a credit card a platform. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for the uh, introduction. And again, I'm Alex Rodriguez. I'm the director of technical services. And I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, you know, how Smarter Commerce uh, prioritizes security within its uh, payment solution. Um, Smarter Commerce just recently uh, revalidated their uh, Smarter Commerce uh, pay cloud solution uh, with the uh, PCI DSS 4.0 uh, standard. So again, we're a validated level one service provider. And um, as part of that, you know, we meet all of the requirements of PCI DSS and, um, one of the, the things that we do with the solution that helps to, to maintain security is our, our solution works with tokenized card throughout, uh, throughout the solution. So what that means is we do not store any card data anywhere in, in our systems or within your JD Edwards uh, systems or databases. And that greatly reduces your, uh, your PCI uh, scope, which we'll talk a little bit about some of the the different um, this kind of levels that you that exist as far as uh, uh, validation. In addition, our, our Smarter Commerce uh, Pay Cloud we provides all the necessary infrastructure and services to securely process uh, credit card payments. Uh, what that means is, you know, when you roll out our solution, you don't have to worry about um, installing any new servers or systems within your environment. You simply have to uh, get our software installed and then point to uh, your workspace within our cloud solution. Um, we also support point-to-point uh, -point encrypted um, devices for card present transactions. So if there's any requirements to uh, take physical cards um, using a chip and pin device, um, you know, we support that and it's, uh, you know, fully integrated and validated uh, part of our solution. So, Moving on to, to the next slide, just a couple slides there we'll talk about, you know, what is PCI DSS and, and 
what what do you need to know about it uh, as far as your organization goes to make sure that you're keeping up to date with the latest standards. So PCI DSS is basically a common set of tools and measurements to help to make sure that any sensitive information, uh, specifically the you know payment card data or what they call it the, the primary account number or PAN, is not compromised. So one thing to keep in mind is PCI is not a law um, or regulation. It's just a set of standards that different uh, payment uh, card brands, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, uh, join together to make sure that security is at the forefront for uh, all of the, their customers that are going to be taking um, transactions. So um, this PCI DSS applies to any entity that stores, processes, or transmits cardholder data. So um, we'll talk a little bit about you know, how that look, how that works. And uh, Diego will demonstrate some of the different options that exist for, for actually entering the card data and also show, you know, who would be the person entering it and how that impacts, um, you know, PCI scoping. But, you know, as, as a level one service provider, Smarter Commerce has to meet all of the, the PCI DSS requirements. And, and thus, that's why we went through and re received our, our certification as a level one service provider. So in, in general, here are the main PCI DSS requirements. They're broken into, into 12 requirements and kind of six main goals. Um, the first main goal is to, to maintain and secure networks and systems. And that applies essentially pretty much to any organization, whether you handle credit card data or not. It's just, you know, good business practice to make sure that all your systems are secure. Uh, protect cardholder data. In this case, because the way Smarter Commerce is architected, it doesn't necessarily apply because cardholder data is not stored anywhere within the solution. Um, the next goal is to maintain a vulnerability uh, management program, essentially have a, a set of uh, practices and um, in place to make sure that all vulnerabilities are, you know, patched and secured uh, as soon as possible. Um, implement strong access control measures, make sure that, you know, all access to any systems is secure. As an example, you know, requiring, you know, multi-factor authentication for logging into any systems is a good practice to be sure that, um, you know, it's not just one password that is protecting your solution. Uh, regularly monitor and test networks. So, you know, as an example, um, we have to do application scans on a quarterly basis of all of our systems to make sure that, you know, we're not, um, that any vulnerabilities that come out, we're protected from them. And then the, the last goal is just to maintain an information security policy, which most organizations are going to have some set of um, best practices in place for their employees to follow. So we can move on. So the, the last point I wanna cover here, and this is just at a very high level is, you know, because PCI DSS is a requirement for all customers that work with credit cards, um, one of the common questions that uh, that we get is, you know, what what do we have to do uh, in order to be uh, compliant? So, what the PCI DSS organization has is created is, is several self assessment questionnaires that fall into different categories based on on how on what solution is in place and how it's being used. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail on all of these, but I do want to highlight um, three of them, which commonly are used by our customers. And it depends on how you use uh, the Smarter Commerce software, uh, which category you'd fall in. So just as an example, um, I'm going to highlight SAQA, which is the, the easiest of the self-assessment questionnaires. And this one applies when you completely outsource all payment um, activity to a third party. And with Smarter Commerce, you can achieve this by using our uh, pay by email option and also um, our uh, 
card on file option, essentially um, eliminating the need for any of your customers, any of your employees to actually enter or handle any credit card data. So that's that's kind of the ultimate um, best way to, to uh, minimize the amount of effort needed to become PCI compliant. Um, the recommendation is that all customers, uh, you know, work with a QSA, a Qualified Security Assessor, to make sure that, you know, your environment is, is secured and that you're following the uh, the appropriate uh, best practices. So, um, at this point, that's kind of the high-level overview that I wanted to give on uh, PCI and security uh, for Smarter Commerce, and I'll uh, hand it back over to Jerry uh, at this point. Thanks for your time. Through uh, Alex, uh, very helpful. Um, so what we'll do now, folks, is transition over to the demo portion of our agenda. Uh, and I'm going to transition over to Diego Fernandez, and he's going to walk through a series of different uh, use cases uh, from natively within JD Edwards Enterprise One. And you guys will get a real sense of what a JD Edwards centric or a JD Edwards first solution looks like and feels like. Um, so with that said, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Diego, you should have access to share uh, your screen. Folks, if there's any questions throughout this time, feel free to type it into the Q&A uh, tab there in Zoom. Uh, and, and we hope to address that throughout the portion of our demo here. And uh, with that said, Diego, you should be able to take over. Uh, yeah, Jerry, I don't see. have, I don't have uh, screen sharing. Ability. Okay, let's see. I just I went ahead and gave you permission. That should be enough. Thank you. All right, we're looking at your screen, Diego. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon and morning to everyone on the uh, webinar. I've gone ahead and shared my desktop here, as Jerry mentioned, and you should be seeing a login screen. Uh, to the JD Edwards Enterprise One 9.2 environment that I'll be using to demonstrate uh, some of the capabilities and some of the points that have been pre uh, previously shared. Important to understand also that our solution is available and works with, and we have several customers that are still in JD Edwards Enterprise One 9.0 and also 9.1. But here today, we will be looking at the 9.2 environment. So we're going to start uh, basically by walking through a sales order entry application uh, that a your typical customer service representative or salesperson would be inter interfacing with. Uh, this would be the sales order header. As you can see, this is the standard application uh, for JD Edwards. There's really nothing here uh, that uh, is different between a, a JD Edwards standard application and uh, utilizing it with credit cards. So once the user enters in all the header information that is necessary for this sales order, uh, they would hit the save and continue button to move over to where they would enter in uh, the products that they uh, that the customer is desiring to purchase, purchase whatever uh, that may be um, at this moment in time. Once they've completed the entry of all the order lines, then the typical uh, action is either to click on submit, enter new, or submit and close. And because this is a customer desiring to pay with a credit card, they'll be driven over to a new application that's introduced as part of our solution. Uh, An integrated real-time looks and feels like any other J.D. Edwards application um, and uh, follows all of the JD Edwards standards. Uh, please note that our solution is Oracle validated. And because of that, we were awarded our own code. So all of the objects, applications, reports, named event rules, business functions, and others that we provide you uh, are following the, the Oracle JD Edwards development standards and own system code, which is Q67. So what does the screen do for you? This screen, based on setup and configuration, allows the CSR or salesperson to go out and gather a, an authorization of funds against one or many credit cards. They have multiple ways of doing this. Uh, one of the ways is 
by clicking on authorize with a credit card file. That means that previously I in, we've interacted with this customer and this customer has saved a card on file uh, at some point that that card is actually stored with the payment gateway and, and, the, and the pay cloud uh, hosted functionality. And what is stored locally uh, in your environment is a token referencing that specific transaction or that specific card. That is one way to be able to authorize funds with our solution is if that customer has previously uh, provided a card on file and those cards can be managed via this button here where you can define the various cards on file. You are allowed per PCI to view and store the last four digits of the card for reference, uh, as you see here in this example. And the, so this information allows your user to validate the card that is the customer is desiring to use. And if that is uh, the card they would desire to use, then they, that would have defaulted in automatically. Or they could have selected a different card on the list if desired. Once they have their card information here, you'll notice here along the right side of the screen, the running totals of the order, um, any subtotals of products that um, are to be authorized, any sales tax calculated by J.D. Edwards tax tables or integration with Vertex or integration with uh, at the Av Avatax solution. Um, Freight calculations, if you're using transportation or other freight systems, we can pull in uh, the freight amount. And then the order total uh, to be authorized at this point. Our solution also has the ability to do what's called credit card surcharging. Uh, this is the uh, capability of passing through processor service fees onto the merchant. Now, this again is up to you if you want to do that or not based on configuration, but we do have that capability of that flow through processor surcharge fee. So in total, we want to authorize 70690. And the user then would have their uh, card in, uh, a card on file information. And all we would need to do is enter the credit card security code. A credit card security code is that three or four digit code, depending on the card type, that is found on your card. And um, that code cannot be per PCI standards, not be stored, encrypted, or saved in any fashion. So that code should, needs to always be provided. Uh, now, this is an optional capability that you can turn on or off, but it is highly recommended uh, to be turned on uh, in order to validate that three or four digit code and protect you from any possible fraud. Once that is provided, then as a user, all I would need to do is click on authorize credit card on file. That goes out to the credit card pay cloud, passes the information into a uh, credit card um, a processor, and then that processor will return whether it has authorized the funds or not. In this case, we have a successful authorization, and that basically completes this transaction, and I can go ahead and save the order. So as you saw, very quick and easy um, example, and one of the scenarios of being able to enter an order in just a few steps and go out and authorize funds on a credit card uh, that I had previously saved for this customer on file. Let's do another example here. I'm doing a second order uh, for the same customer. And this time uh, we're going to assume that this customer does not have a credit card on file, uh, but rather they would they would rather uh, receive an encrypted email where they can go ahead and enter the credit card information themselves. Uh, this functionality we call authorized by message. Uh, they can either receive an SSS, SMS message to their phone, uh, to their, their smartphone via a text, or they can receive an email. Uh, they would your CSR would click on the button and it would list out all of the various emails 
who's who uh, that you have on file, or you can go ahead and type a new email here uh, for that customer. Uh, you would your CSR select the email that desires to receive the encrypted information and uh, goes ahead and saves uh, the order. At this point, the CSR is done. Uh, there's really nothing for them to do. It's just waiting for the customer to now receive that email and uh, process and authorize funds on their card. If I go and inquire on that order that we just entered, uh, in this case, order 8653, we'll notice that the order is on a specific hold code. Uh, you can define any hold code you want, but basically in this example, it's waiting on the credit card authorization to occur by the customer. In the meantime, the customer will receive either a email or a, a text message. Uh, here is the, the example of that. Uh, a, email or text message explaining to them that it's waiting on an authorization for the order and the amount. They would go through and process the authorization for uh, that credit card um, and whatever dollar amounts that are uh, needed. So here they would go through, they would select, enter their name on card as the customer and enter the credit card that they're desiring to use. Notice that the customer is the one initiating all of the order entry. Since the customer is initiating all of the uh, credit card information entry and to a secure portal, the credit card information is never passed through uh, the, the eyes or ears of the, your sales rep or CSR. So this is one way to really truly minimize your PCI compliance and the SAQ level that you need to adhere to. So here, I, I as the customer go through and enter in all of the valid information. I can even val verify what I'm ordering as part of it. If I want to save this card on file for future use, I can do that here by checking this box. And that way, next time when I call in, they can just select right out of the cards on file and be able to a transaction like we previously saw. Once done, I would go ahead and click the apply button here uh, to validate the card. And if valid, I would go ahead and process the payment. This completes the interaction of the customer with the authorization of funds. At that point, back in JD Edwards, uh, my order, yes, is still on a specific hold code, but there is a UBE that you would be executing uh, within your environment that retrieves all authorizations done by email or by message. Uh, this UBE, customers set it up to run um, you know, once an hour, once every 15 minutes, however you want in your scheduler. That will process all of the authorizations. And once processed, then automatically the order will be released off of hold and be able to continue the process. So you can see the idea here is to allow your CSRs or salespersons to be able to quickly enter an order, uh, get all the information in, send an encrypted email to the customer so that they do not hear um, the card information at all, and obviously uh, the, the gain confidence from the customer that they're typing it in to a secure uh, payment portal where they can enter all their credit card information that will be branded uh, and look like your customer, your uh, website, your customer logo and colors. And once that's done, then the order automatically will then release off of hold and continue its process. So that is a second way uh, to be able to enter orders and uh, uh, have the customer themselves uh, enter all of the credit card information. A third way, and we'll see a third example here for this same customer, 
is where your customer is going to read the credit card information directly over the phone to the CSR. So if I enter here a couple of items, and I go again to the credit card screen, in this example, I'm going to authorize with a new card, meaning the customer is going to, over the phone, read me that credit card information, and I, as the CSR or salesperson, type it in. Now, where do I type it in? I never type that information into J.D. Edwards. I leave J.D. Edwards temporarily, and I type it in to a hosted payment page um, that is hosted by us in the pay cloud and our payment processors that we um, um, integrate with. Here, uh, I would then, as the salesperson, type in the name on card that is provided, uh, the card number that is provided by the customer, uh, the expiration date uh, for the card, and the card security code. Once I've entered all that, I would go ahead and click on apply that validates the information just provided. Once I get a successful authorization, I return to J.D. Edwards, and then I go ahead and pull the token information for that specific transaction and that authorization. So as a, as a third method to allow your CSR to themselves enter credit cards uh, directly into the J.D. Edwards um, um, sales order process. Important to understand the distinctions between the three, because depending on your security level and you as a customer, the desire of either uh, not allowing your CSRs or your sales personnel to manage or handle any type of credit card information, you may want to always use the authorized by message or email capabilities that we offer. Um, obviously allowing them to also store cards on file uh, against their account so that uh, then they can be used later and, and process even more. Uh, in addition, uh, if you do allow for your CSRs and, and salespersons to hear the credit card information and type it in themselves, yeah, as you can see, it's very quick and easy to pop out to our hosted payment right from JD Edwards by a click of a button and then enter the information, gain the authorization, come back and store that information as part of the order. So the the, the main driver here is ease of use for your CSRs, for your sales personnel to be able to enter in those orders. And then obviously, as you saw here in my environment, you can use a mix of all three, depending on what your customer is, is dictating to you. Some customers do not want to uh, provide you the credit card information over the phone. Some may want to enter it themselves. Others wouldn't mind. So it all depends on how you want to configure and obviously uh, set up our solution uh, so that it matches your policies and procedures. But either of the ways, it offers flexibility and ease of use and communication with the customer. And as authorizations are done, not only do they gather an email to enter in the credit card information, but they will also gather a confirmation email of the, the funds that were authorized. So here, as you can see, uh, because I've gone ahead and authorized some funds, it tells me the exact dollar amount of my order, any surcharges on my order, and the total amount currently authorized um, on my order. Important to note that the authorization is just a reservation of funds for a period of time. Uh, once um, I have a valid authorization, that authorization will then live as associated to that sales order uh, for normally up to seven days. As part of our processes, if authorizations expire, we have capabilities to reauthorize and reattain new authorization. But the goal is obviously to eventually do what's called the settlement process or capturing a fund. Uh, the settlement process is typically done through a batch report that we provide, an RQ67 report. Uh, and what this does, it, it pulls all the orders in a specific status that are ready for settlement 
or, or capturing of funds, and it passes the actual amount of product that typically is shipped or that you've shipped, uh, any, any sales tax on that, any actual freight on that, uh, or delivery fees, and it charges the credit card against the original authorization. So our solution takes it from end to end, from order entry all the way through to uh, payment posting that allows you to process those payments and post them automatically against the AR system. So let's go ahead and uh, walk through one of our sample orders here that we just uh, processed. We'll go ahead and take uh, this order all the way through. It's order number 8652. So you can get a feel for the entire process. So I'm going to quickly walk through uh, some of the typical steps that you'll find in the order to cash process. Here I'm running pick slips. Again, normally uh, for uh, orders uh, to, and managing them down at the warehouse. So let's take this order 652 and walk it through its steps. So we'll go ahead and run the pick slip. Real quick here, we'll just let it uh, finish. Once pick slips are done, um, we can go ahead and do the next step in my process, which is the uh, con confirmed shipment process. And we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll ship confirm uh, all of my order lines. And uh, we'll go ahead and then move to the next step, which in my environment, again, is the settlement process. This is where we are charging the credit card and capturing the funds against the uh, actual amount shipped plus any sales tax or any freight uh, that's been added in uh, to the order. So we'll allow that to process here for just a moment and give that a chance. Now, typically this report uh, it generates a, a a report here, and it's a report that is normally used by the accounting department later in the process to reconcile funds. And we're going to talk about credit card reconciliation and payment reconciliation in just a moment. But this will list all of these settled actions and uh, the amount that it was fully settled for so that you have a record of the exact amount that was charged on an order by order basis and card by card basis, along with a total um, a dollar amount that should be collected the next day. So here we've gone ahead and settled these funds and we would then go ahead and walk it to the next step in the process, which in my environment is invoice printing. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll give this just a moment to process. And this is, again, standard invoice printing, uh, invoice print of JD Edwards. We'll give it a chance to just go ahead and, and finalize. And then we'll do what's called the sales update, which, as you know, the sales update will create the, an invoice in the customer ledger along with uh, creating all of the accounting uh, transactions and post the sales into the sales history um, uh, tables and uh, sales analytics. So uh, we'll give this a, a moment to finish and we'll go ahead and um, now go jump over to customer ledger inquiry here. And if we look up our sales order that we just did, and we posted, we'll notice that um, it didn't post. Sorry about that. Seems like my uh, sales update didn't execute. Let me just check what happened here real quick. Uh, it is, oh, I grabbed the wrong number. It's invoice 6068, my apologies. It's invoice 6068. Let me go back here to customer ledger. Invoice 6068. I had typed the order number instead of the invoice number. There is my uh, invoice, uh, 646669. Uh, and it's currently open because, again, uh, we have not 
uh, uh, run the, the uh, posting of payment, which we will go ahead and do now. So this is a report that we provide you that will take all of those settled amounts and automatically uh, apply them to their appropriate invoice, clearing the invoice and moving the funds to, to your cash operating or due from merchant bank account. So here we're gonna quickly run through and uh, post all of these payments for our order, 8652. And that will pull in uh, those payments and apply them uh, within the customer uh, ledger and uh, apply a cash receipt. So we'll give this just a moment. And again, these reports also are utilized normally by accounting uh, later in the process to reconcile the funds um, um, uh, once the monies are wired from your merchant bank. So if I go back to my customer ledger inquiry here and I refresh my screen, we'll notice that the open amount is now gone. The transaction has been closed. And if I go to receipt detail uh, for this uh, record, we'll notice that a record has been uh, associated to this, clearing that invoice uh, in this case because of the use of an Amex ending in 8431. So, as you can see, our process takes it from end to end. As long as we gather a valid authorization up front, everything else is automated throughout the process. So there is no need for human or uh, user intervention. Uh, the, the process can, will just work where you schedule uh, uh, things like the settlement report in your schedule, uh, uh, automated scheduling system uh, in the evenings, uh, invoicing, sales update, and payment posting. All of this will then run automatically and apply and uh, uh, trigger all of the uh, transactions that are needed. In the meantime, the next morning, when your users come in, uh, they can utilize our reconciliation, payment reconciliation applications and processes to reconcile all the payments against the monies that have been wired uh, by your merchant bank. So we provide you reconciliation capabilities uh, that allow you to reconcile and tick and tie uh, your payments uh, just like you would a specific um, a bank check or deposit within uh, your bank account. So this uh, allows you to go through, reconcile all of those uh, credit card charges, uh, clear them, and uh, validate that you're receiving uh, all of the funds that you're supposed to be receiving. So going back to what I was saying earlier, we've automated the entire process pretty much from beginning to end, allowing you to capture that authorization quickly and easily up front as part of that order entry. Uh, we have capabilities of utilizing this same process with other third-party applications uh, through API plugins that we provide allow you to integrate your e-commerce solution or your point of sale solution if it's a third-party application utilizing the same credit card engine. Uh, we also have capabilities of, have, of doing credit card present transactions. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed that as part of, uh, of, of the options. If you have uh, counter operations where customers are walking up uh, to your counter and you're using JD Edwards, for example, as the order entry application at the counter, uh, we also provide uh, being able to charge a credit card utilizing a terminal device. We integrate on uh, terminal devices um, that uh, accept chip and pin and contactless type credit cards uh, that uh, allow your customer to use their physical credit card right there, integrated real time with JD Edwards. So this allows you to maintain a certain level of security and integration uh, real time with your JD Edwards solution and have peer-to-peer -peer type transactions uh, with the device. So what we saw here has to do with sales order processing but our credit card solution extends much further than that. Uh, for customers that want to pay open AR invoices, uh, for example, and they want to use a credit card or ACH payment 
uh, we also have capabilities in that area. So if you have a customer that you invoiced on terms against credit limit, and now they want to make a payment and you want to allow them to pay those invoices utilizing a credit card, well, we do have applications that give you that capability. So this application allows you to um, process a credit card transaction, uh, selecting open AR invoices um, from the uh, invoices that that customer may have open, uh, select them through at one or many of them, return, and even allow for partial payment uh, on the specific invoice lines. Uh, this allows you to apply the amount that they want. In this case, they want to just apply $800 uh, and they have the same capability. I can charge with a credit card on file if that customer has one. In this one, in this case, this customer does not. I can utilize a new credit card or I can charge on a terminal device if I have a connected terminal device. So this allows you to use credit card solution as a collection vehicle for open AR invoices and may gain payment those invoices. And we have the same capabilities here with uh, charging uh, credit card surcharges if you want to add in surcharges uh, to uh, the total amount that's being charged to the credit card. In addition to being able to accept payment um, via credit card, we have that same capability uh, via ACH. So if a customer wants to pay uh, via an ACH transfer, uh, you can also do that through here uh, where you can apply a receipt to a customer's account. Um, and let me go ahead and enter a customer number here. and uh, select some invoices for that customer. And let's go ahead and find a invoice here. And once I have that, if you turn on ACA processing, then that will drive you to a, a, an, an application provided by us uh, that allows you to transact directly with the banking network uh, where you can process an ACH payment on behalf of the customer and it will wire the monies from their bank account uh, to out your bank account, uh, clearing off those invoices uh, automatically. So here, basically this customer already has a ACH bank account information with us that's been encrypted uh, and stored here um, and defaulted in. And then once uh, all the information is accurate, I can add a comment here and uh, I would submit into the ACH network. Uh, it validates the information and if everything is good, it goes ahead and approves the transaction and I can go ahead and apply that payment against those invoices. So as you can see, a uh, very quick and easy collect collection vehicles as either a um, credit card against those open AR invoices or an ACH payment against those open AR invoices. And then lastly, I wanted to touch on, uh, we also have a full collections management capability within AR where we can send out email reminders uh, to customers um, to, uh, remind them of payment that is due uh, on, on specific invoices. And we can even set up auto pay rules uh, so that customers can, can set up a, an auto pay similar to you, you may do for your own personal uh, bills and stuff. And it automatically charges the, a credit card or uh, performs an ACH transfer uh, once those invoices come due based on that auto pay rule. Either of these will, will uh, send out a email reminder to the user, uh, something similar to this, letting them know that there are some invoices coming due um, based on the rules that you've set. 
In this case, this customer has two invoices. They would go ahead and get this encrypted email or a encrypted text message, and they would click the pay now button, which would allow them to drive through the process of paying these invoices automatically. Um, so this is our collections management system that you can set up various sets of rules and notify customers of invoices coming due so that they can make payment on a timely basis and automate the entire process of collection. So this is another capability that you'll find within our solution um, and as part of our JD Edwards uh, payment processing capabilities. There's a lot more here that we handle um, around refunds and, and returns. Uh, we have a series of uh, analysis reports and other capabilities that we offer. We uh, handle back orders and future dated lines and things of that nature. Uh, if there's interest in this area, please reach out and we can go into much further detail of all of these various capabilities. And then lastly, uh, just to touch on it, uh, in addition to our payment solution integrated to JD Edwards, we also have a capability through our payment portal cap uh, functionality. Uh, we have an electronic invoice and presentment uh, and payment portal, allowing your customers to set up accounts that are tied to their AR account um, in your JD Edwards and manage payment against uh, their um, invoices and uh, open invoices uh, within your system. So once they've logged in as that customer, they get thrown on a dashboard that gives them information about recent orders, invoice history, they can manage their cards on file, they can see their aging, um, and they can see what they have open. And it's as easy as paying open invoices, they can go through, they can also schedule payments, select the invoices that they want to make payment on, and walk through the process of validating the information uh, and, and the, the payment that they want to make and entering in either a, a credit card information or a ACH transfer to clear off uh, those invoices. So our solution not only allows you to manage payments within JD Edwards, but also we have a payment portal that your customers can access directly uh, with their credentials and account uh, to be able to view invoice history information, make payments, view order information, download invoices if you if you archive your uh, invoice PDFs and other uh, functionality. I invite you to go out to our website, smartercommerce.net, and under resources, product documentation, you're going to find a wealth of information related to our payment solution. Uh, you, you should focus here on payment processing. You can see all the various types. And we also focus here on the invoice present, presentment and payment portal. With that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and pass the presentation back to Jerry and Alex for some closing comments. Thank you. Thank you for, for that going through. Um, so we've got a, a couple minutes here, so just some closing comments. Um, uh, uh, so like Diego mentioned, uh, if your team has any additional questions regarding Smarter Commerce, uh, we can certainly schedule a follow-up session to go through that. I know I've been kind of uh, chatting through and answering a few questions throughout the session. Um, I'll stay on here for a few more uh, minutes, just in case somebody has additional questions. Um, but with that said, we'll go ahead and conclude today's webinar. A big final thank you to Diego and Alex for joining us on today's session, as well as for all of today's attendees. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all of you will be receiving a follow-up email with the recording to today's session. And we look forward to uh, talking further with the rest of the team here. Thank you, guys, and have a great rest of the week.